Hi, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Got one of these wonderful little engine DIY models to test. This is a petrol hit and miss engine four stroke. It's the ball top version, which I believe is a new engine to those. Really do enjoy doing these. Let's get this box open and have a look at it. Now, I can't say on the channel that I'm a real box opening fan myself, but I'm gonna open this one live on camera. I've not looked inside this before because the whole experience is part of these models. They really, really do pack these things nicely. All comes with foam packaging. So there's, there's no chance that anything's going to get damaged. Right, let's have a little lift this out. Heavy, of course. This is gonna be a all metal and wood model. Very little plastic on the model itself. And there we go. Look how well packed that is. Absolutely fantastic little instruction book as well. Let's zoom in and have a closer look. I've, I've had people do comments on these um, engines before and, and, and they tend to criticize them without ever owning one. But honestly, the quality that you're getting from these China models these days, it's just something we never had before. Little bag there of spare parts. Yes, the cylinder. I mean, you should never have to change it, but it does have a nylon piston ring. I know someone else said, you know, it should really be a metal metal ring, but then you need oil control and everything. And to be honest, I can't see these ever wearing out. We also have a little key here that will go into a electric drill and that will fit onto the flywheel to save you spinning this over by hand. Included as well, if you want to spin it over by hand, is the old pull there, string pull. So we wrap that round the flywheel and you can start this by hand. They generally do need a little bit of starting, I'm going to say. That's all part of the fun and going. Really, really nice quality. They haven't let us down engine DIY. This is fabulous quality on this hit and mess engine. This one is really quite interesting, the way it's all set up with the fuel tank and the ball water reservoir here which of course will call the cylinder now i find hit and miss engines really really fascinating compared to steam engines it's a petrol engine it's four stroke but it doesn't fire on every stroke hence the hit and miss there will be a centrifugal type system here i think it's probably to do with this i don't really know sometimes they have weights that expand on the flywheel sometimes you've got uh, two spinning balls and what the idea of this system is, is that when the engine is on idle, it doesn't fire on every stroke, hence hit or miss. It will fire probably every third or fourth stroke, and we'll hear it when we get it going. It will be like, boom, chug, 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 boom, chug, 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 boom. As you increase the load on the flywheel, on this drive, drive wheel here, as the load increases, then the engine will fire more regularly until it's flat out where it's basically just a conventional four stroke engine. That made the engines uh, quite efficient, quite efficient. Of course, they were superseded by diesel engines that were cheaper to make and uh, also cheaper to buy. But this one is really, really nice. I'm just looking at the quality on this. It's heavy as well. Got an oil feed system here that goes into the cylinder to uh, keep the cylinder lubricated. And here is the gearing system. This will be for the speed regulator, which will control how the engine misses. Uh, there is, can you just see that there? I don't know if you can see that. There you go. That will be <laughs> that will be the exhaust oh that would be that that would be an exhaust silencer that would be an exhaust silencer that will be for the exhaust valve there and what it will do it will hold that exhaust valve open so there is uh, there is no compression there is no vacuum which means the engine won't fire it only works by there is no fuel pump of course it's it's um, gravity fed so it only works by by suction by vacuum there's no vacuum it won't suck any fuel it won't fire Really, really nice, all metal, all metal and brass. I'm not seeing any plastic on this model at all. So over on this side, we have a simple cam here and a point system, which like a bit like you have in a car. And I assume in the box, we'll have a look at in a moment, there'll be a ballast. So obviously when the battery is connected, we have high voltage that will open and close. And then that will activate the sparking plug just there. Oh, you can hear it's got compression. 
yeah really really nice now when it comes down to the base on these again it looks nice this is going to be a hardwood bamboo and i have modified a previous engine and i can tell you when you drill this this is a really really tough wood so you haven't got to worry too much about marking it now this one we do have a little box here which says retro can you see that and in here we'll have all of the electronic gubbins very very simple these normally use one or two batteries there we go yep yeah, single aa battery for the ballast on off switch for the ignition system and then at the bottom there just a simple simple ballast controlled by those points so very very easy to set up there's no building involved on this particular model of course it, it arrives I can't get it. I can't get that back in. There we go. Of course, it arrives fully assembled. I mean, they do make kits on engine DIY. If you're into the building, and I have done a few, and they're quite rewarding to do. But sometimes it's just nice to get something out of the box and run it. Right. I think that's really it for the introduction. I think we'll take this downstairs and uh, get it all oiled up, get some fuel in it, and see if we can start it. Just a few basic things you're going to need before you can run the engine. Obviously, one new double a battery for the coil pack there when it comes down to fuel any petrol will run with this engine including lighter fuel personally i've found this coleman's camping fuel burns very very cleanly you don't get any soot on the spark plug i also and this is my own preference i also just mix a very small little bit of um two-stroke oil in with the fuel you don't need to on this model because it has that oil feed drip into the cylinder water for the water jacket i'm going to use the ionized water it shouldn't get that hot these don't tend not to run that hot so you shouldn't have to worry about scale but i have this anyway for my steam engines now before you even think about running the engine for the first time you need to lubricate all of the working parts, all of these gears, all of these push rods, the valves, the springs. Um, be a bit careful when it comes to the contact, so you don't want to get too much oil on that contact cam there. But all of the bearings, there are little holes there, you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there are holes in there for the main bearing journals on the main shaft. So all of that needs to uh, be oiled, and then it will be fine for up to say an hour's use oil wise you need a thin oil i tend to use this singer super oil on my steam engines my petrol engines it's about the same price as three in one but so uh, any household thin oil will do the trick so right i'm going to just get on and do that and then we can talk about starting it comes to starting these models this is the fun or could be the frustration if you like it's really nice that they supply a key that you can put into an electric drill that saves a little bit of arm work now these are supplied factory set the air mixture screw there is factory set never seems to work in the UK I don't know if it's different temperature different altitude but I do try to start it at the factory settings but i end up having to find my own settings I, I find these run a little bit too rich as they come out of the box what i tend to do is end up closing the air valve all of the way in um, which means it's super rich like on choke and then gradually undo it by about a quarter turn once the engine starts to fire i can then lean off the mixture just as you would if you had an old-fashioned car you'd be pushing the choke in and out if you had a motorcycle or moped you'll be mucking about with the mixture as well it's all part of the tinkering um i think it is part of the enjoyment of these uh, engines you know don't don't see it as a frustration see it as part of the experience let's have a go see if we can start it Thank <laughs> you. 
There she goes. Running really nice and smooth. Just got to get the mixture right now. See the regulator, speed adjuster working now, controlling how many fire strokes there are. It's running just a little rich at the moment. Um, it's quite cold today and uh, it's taken a little while to warm up. So there we go, I mean it's a wonderful thing. You just fiddle with the mixture here as it warms up just to get it running as smooth as possible. Really, really nice model, not too big, doesn't take up too much room. You can almost run it indoors really. Fantastic. If you're interested in this model there will be a link in the description to the engine DIY website. While you're there, check out some of their other steam models and also their other hit and miss engine models, all different prices, all different sizes, all on that website. You spend a long time, it's running out of fuel now, it's running out of fuel, but you can spend a long, a long time and also a lot of money over on the website. I also get a discount code, so if you're thinking of purchasing one of these, make sure you use my discount code at the uh, checkout. I think I get about 15% off of the retail price, so definitely worth using my code. It won't last forever though, so apologies if you're watching this video in a year's time and the code has run out. I hope you enjoyed the video, I enjoyed making it for you. Thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. If you get a second, just give me a thumbs up before you go. You don't have to, but I would appreciate it. Stay tuned for more radio stuff and also little steam and petrol models. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Fred's in the Shed Where the magic unfolds Fred in the Shed With his trusty CB He's a friend to the lonely on a frequency